Welcome back to Les Schwab Tire Center's Outdoor GPS. It's time for Owens Field Report, sponsored by Les Schwab Tire Centers. The reports from yesterday were very much uh, disappointing, to say the least. I, and that may have been me just jinxing everyone. I was standing here saying, based on what the conditions are, the weather and this and that, that things could probably be interesting again being yesterday uh, but when we get to the turbidity here in a little bit we're going to show you why things may not have just been as good as they could have been long story short on the willamette yesterday pretty slow this morning though i have heard of a couple of fish caught one in particular down low around fred's <laughs> and then another one about as high up as you can get uh, as well in the Oregon City area. So hopefully, you know, with the river stabilizing overnight, uh, and we'll, again, we'll get to that, um, hopefully things will just improve. Obviously, today being Easter, there might not be a lot of folks out there, uh, but as the week progresses and the weather gets beautiful, even more uh, beautiful, I'm sure there's going to be more people out there putting in some time on both rivers. The Columbia yesterday as well, not great, but that's been the consistency of it, right? It's just that time of year, and it just simply hasn't been that good. Um, I was talking with some buddies just a last handful of days. We remember days just five, six, eight years ago where March was a very, very good month, where we would have very good fishing opportunities. It just doesn't seem like that's worked out the last couple of years. It could just be a timing thing. I'd like to blame it on El Nino, but... I think we can't at this point. Uh, but overall, it is still only the first week now of April. Uh, we'll see how things pan out. And we're getting several questions about uh, ex extensions and this and that. We don't know. There's just no way to know uh, what they're going to actually do until we get through this week and they, they do a run update. Not a lot of great um, information coming from the test nets and this and that down low. Uh, but hopefully those are things that will change uh, quickly and maybe get us back out there if we have the opportunity. But again, those are very difficult things to look forward to. All right, let's take a look at the fish counts. Uh, nothing's been updated since yesterday, so really not a whole lot going on. Looking at the 10-year average again this morning, it's just flatlined. It's just right there at the bottom. Nothing's changed. And when we look at, the, at Bonneville, uh, same thing, 64 total. Again, they haven't updated since yesterday, uh, but, you know, it just basically should tell you that the fish haven't made a big push. These are springers. They're not in a rush. They're not in a hurry to get over the falls or the dam. Let's just hope that they're filling the river up a little bit. But the numbers of sea lions and some and the photos that we video clip, I should say, that we showed you yesterday, uh, there's a lot of them out there right now. It's a little disturbing in the long run, but we're not going to get sidetracked. Uh, with that river levels, we switched it up a little bit today and going forward just because of the time of year. You can see, though, that the Willamette is dropping a little bit faster than its prediction, which is a darn good thing. Because based on yesterday where it did level off, and if you remember, the turbidity yesterday at this time was right around 7. Well, that turbidity shot straight up and was doing that all day long, which is not a good thing. Now, technically, it didn't get too bad as far as the numbers go, but when things are changing that quickly, that'll absolutely put the fish off that are there. Uh, if they're there, you know, it just kind of screws them up a little bit. Let's take a look at that. Uh, you can see, again, yesterday, we were right in here in the sevens, and it shot all the way up to just below 11, or right at 11, uh, as a matter of fact. Can't quite tell if it's leveled off just because, of course, it hasn't updated again. Uh, but that is not something that's going to help. Now, with the river actually falling like you just saw, if that turns over this upcoming week, if you're not going to spend time on the Columbia, absolutely. It is now April. <sighs> i got to switch gears. This is going to get crazy here real, <laughs> real soon. Columbia, same thing, very stable. Uh, we're going to show you the turbidity. Uh, on the on the Columbia as well. Now this is a little bit different of a graph than what you see for the Willamette, but the numbers are based on the same technology, right? So if you take a look at this, it's still below four. So the clarity on the Columbia is right where it should be, pretty much clear, right? So if you're going to be on the anchor or trolling, or if you're going to be doing something other than what the norm will be, which is fish flash and a herring, uh, it won't be water conditions that are going to be screwing you up if you're not getting pit. Now, like myself, I look for all the excuses that I can find. Don't forget, though, yes, we had the guys in yesterday from Procure, but if you want to have a chance to win that prize pack, you got to send Jason an email, and uh, you might have an opportunity to actually 
uh, win that prize pack. Now, should we take the call first or go right over to Katie? All right, let's check in with Katie Sinegan to find out what this weather is going to do. And Katie, this upcoming week, or this week, I should say now, is a huge week for all of us that love to chase spring Chinook on the Columbia in particular. What do we get to look forward to? You get to look forward to some sunny, warm weather and then a drop back into the spring weather, maybe even a little chilly spring weather as we see our temperatures get into the low mid 50s, which is below average for this time of year. I've been looking for sunshine. I've been tracking the clouds for you today as we're expecting these to clear out. They have cleared for some, but they're still around. We expect it to take till about noon. And what that means is you'll have a sunny, warm day again once those clouds clear out. If you're doing Easter egg hunts or maybe getting out and about, you'll looking at temperatures again in the mid 60s. We're in that trough ridge trough pattern now. This is the ridge that's coming in. What's nice and strong, giving us those warmer temperatures and the clear skies. By the time we get to Tuesday night going into Wednesday, we start to see this trough dropping in, and that's what brings that cooler showery pattern that we've been talking about. And this stays with us. You can see the low starts to come down. It doesn't quite cut off, but it does drop down and sort of sit around for a bit as it moves on. We continue all the way through till Sunday in that pattern. How much rain are we going to see? Well, in the next three days, the first indication that we have is right there Wednesday morning at 5 a.m. That's only five hundredths of an inch. So you can see we expect to be clear and dry for the next three days. That quick drop about 20 degrees in temperature. Good news, though, overnight we're not looking at any freezing temperatures, at least not through the Portland Metro and the valleys. I mean, really, with that trough coming in, it's going to drop 20 degrees just overnight. A, just about, yeah, just about. We see the highs almost. <laughs> it's a pretty big drop. <laughs> well, enjoy the beautiful weather while you can, Katie, and have a great Easter. We really appreciate the info. See you next weekend. For all of you out there that are intending to hit the Columbia, don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to check in with Shane Magnuson live from the Columbia. He's out with clients this morning, and they've already had uh, a little bit of success. But before that... We've got a Chevy clip that we're gonna have for you. Uh, my brand new 2024 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD Duramax, and it is, it's just simply an amazing setup. Wait till you take a look at it. Outdoor GPS is brought to you by P-Line, because we fish, by Hawk and Fishing, perfection in fishing gear, and by Haxton's Canvas and Upholstery, the trusted name of the Pacific Northwest.